Gaspar Yanga was brought to Mexico slash New Spain on a slave ship. After having been kidnapped from Africa and enslaved, Yanga and his followers overthrew his captors and staged a successful rebellion. He became the first African Middle Passage rebel to win a fight against his Spanish captors and he granted freedom and land for his people. In what is now Veracruz, the southern eastern coast of Mexico, Yanga and a group of enslaved Africans escaped. In 1570s, Gaspar Yanga overpowered the colonizers and completely took over the plantation of Nuestra Señora de la Concepción. Between 1570 and 1609, Yanga led his followers into the mountains located in the vicinity of Paco de Orzabada, or the Star Mountain, which is the highest mountain in Mexico. At that time, it was known as New Spain. During the rebellion, the African and his followers killed 23 people and then escaped the plantation into the mountains of New Spain, a.k.a. Mexico, which were uncultivated. Immediately upon arriving in the mountains, Yanga began building the stronghold which developed in the city, which still stands to this day. Basing themselves in an area with a strategic advantage, they established a maroon colony. The location gave Yanga's group relative safety and for over 30 years served as a safe haven for escaped slaves. Given that the colony couldn't engage in commerce with other villages and merchants, Yanga's group targeted caravans on the Royal Road, which ran from Veracruz to Mexico City. We often hear about the stories of slavery and the different atrocities that have been done to our people in captivity. And we also, we, we see the side of the docile slave and the ones who submitted. However, we don't hear enough about the revolts during the transatlantic and the trans-Saharan slave trade. Our people fought back tooth and nail. Make no mistake about it. There were many cases during the slave trade when Africans fought and won. There were many revolts and they were underreported. Now, here's a case where Jasper actually fought the conquistadors of Spain and he won. That's right. As hard as they fought to defeat Yenga, the Spanish were not able to overtake his establishment. Under Gaspar Yanga's leadership, Spain was unable to colonize the Gulf Coast area for more than three decades. Gaspar Yanga refused to be any person's slave. Yanga outright refused to be anyone's slave and would rather die than give up. He defeated the Spanish colonizers, and to this day, the town is named after him. This particular town in Mexico has stood since the 1570s for over 500 years. Captive Africans were a vital part to the mid-16th century agriculture fortune that Spain was building in the Americas. And Africans were in high demand. Mexico, which was known as New Spain at the time, had the highest African slave population outside of Brazil. Let me repeat that. Mexico had the highest African slave population outside of Brazil. And to this day, there is still a very large African population in Mexico, which we don't often hear about. He was embarrassing the crown. And in response, prior to the battle, Yanga gave the Spanish his conditions. He wanted the area to be a self-ruled area that would pay the Spanish and support the crown if attacked. As expected, the Spanish rejected these terms and the outcome was massive losses for both armies. Spain planned its attacks. Pedro Gonzalez de Herrera and his 550 troops headed to Veracruz and marched from Pueblo at the start of the year. Their mission was to destroy Yanga and his people and bring them back into slavery or put them to death. Yanga's army consisted of 100 trained soldiers of his own and 400 fighters who weren't armed with guns. His troop was armed with machetes, rocks, and weaponry, but they were determined to succeed or die. They had a huge advantage because they knew the terrain and they knew the area well. Frustrated, the Spanish army burned down a primary Yinga settlement and the rebels scattered into the mountains.
However, Yinga settlement came back and they came back strong. In 1632, Mexico, or New Spain's viceroy, Ricardo Pacheco, negotiated with the aged Veracruz ruler, Jasper Yinga. The most important aspect of their treaty was that Palenque would no longer pursue slaves and that Yinka's followers would now own their land. Thus, the town of San Lorenz de la Negros would be established in the 1900s and would later become the town of Yinga, which is still stands to this day. Victory was theirs. The conquistadors of Spain was famous for conquering lands, but they could not overtake Jasper Yinga and his troops. Yinga was named a national hero by Mexico in 1871, but his name and story still haven't made the pop culture leap from legendary to famous. The discourse of Mexican national identity has always established that Mexicans are the result of the encounter between Spaniards and Indians, says Correga Coleman. Despite Mexico being located between the major African slaveholding nations of Brazil and the United States, the story of Yinga and of the African Mexicans, sometimes known as Polenos, is woefully undertold. Yinga should be considered to be among the greatest American heroes this country and this region has ever known. The Black Excellence and Abundance Channel, where black history is every day. Thanks for watching. We ask that you please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And remember, thou art.